I'm in Aruba. Going to Aruba, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, you already know it's about to be a vacation, you dig? Straight vacation, not doing anything. Actually, I gotta work. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to my channel. This is another episode of what it's like being a musician in New York City. Let me tell you what it's like. It's a lot. And obviously, like I just said, I'm going to Aruba, so it's not really me being a musician in New York City, but y'all know the vibes. I'm based in New York City, and I'm flying from New York City to Aruba to perform at a wedding. It's gonna be a very high energy, luxury wedding for apparently known people. I don't know who they are. Probably shouldn't disclose who they are, but I really don't know who we're playing for. But we're doing that. It is currently the day before, so I leave tomorrow morning. Today, I'm just gonna be doing some packing. Gotta pick up my dry cleaning because I have to get my suit altered. And I also have to play a cellar dog tonight with Philip Harper, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm not really gonna document that though. I might throw in one clip of that, but that's not what the video is about. The video is about Aruba. Luckily, the itinerary says that we're gonna be there for three days. And you know, a wedding is only one day, depending on the type of wedding. This is a pretty traditional wedding. So it's basically gonna be like a vacation. The first day I'm there, chilling, getting acquainted. The second day is when the job is. The third and the fourth day, well, the fourth day is when I'm leaving, so I don't really get to do anything that day. But the third day, nothing happening. So y'all know that I have to go to the gym. So after I stop recording this, I'm going straight to the gym. We're hitting chest. We're hitting a PR today, hopefully. Hitting a bench press PR. What I'm worried about, though, is the hotel that we're staying in has a gym. But, you know, it's one of those hotel gyms. They have a treadmill and, like, two five-pound weights. You can't really do anything with that. I'm either going to have to figure out and see if there's some type of gym out there or I'm just gonna have to go three days without going to the gym. Anyways, enough talking about that because that's stuff that I could go all day about and I'm really looking forward to doing this gig. It's gonna be really fun. It's already done, let's go! Come on. Three, two, one. It's already done. Lock in, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it, take your time, take your time. Up! Up to your eyes! Up! I'm continuing to do these Q and A's at the end of the video. If you haven't already, submit a question for the Q and A for the end of the video and this is how you do it. You follow one of my Instagrams, doesn't matter which one, and you send a DM and the DM should start off with Q and A and then follow with a question. Impact all the tropical colors. Yes, I like to overpack just in case that's my thing. Anybody else do that? Y'all like to overpack just so that you can have a variety? Let me know in the comments. I'm not having the best day. I cleaned up most of it, vacuumed most of it, but I spilled a bunch of creatine all over the floor. Ah! This is always the worst part because for God's sakes, MTA, put the ticket booth near the LIRR. It just doesn't make sense for it to be so far away. Here we are, training ourselves almost. Montage. Montage music. Completely unrelated, but an earthquake just hit New York as I'm here waiting to get on the plane. I didn't feel it, but it happened, so that's different, I guess. Yeah, the case fits. Just picked up my bag. Let's go to the hotel. Why are we British in Aruba? <laughs> it's just something, it's it's just something, something that happens when you're international. They <laughs> become I British. Know why. I love it. <laughs> music. Yeah. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Sheesh. Wow. That's a nice little hotel room. Great, great, great. So I'm gonna sign out for now unless there's other stuff going on. Peace.
Uh, there's a long breakfast line, but hopefully it's worth it. Just finished eating. We're gonna see if I can use one of these bad boys to get to the gym. We'll see, we'll see. out <laughs> all right we're almost to the gym i reached the end of the e-scooter zone and so i had to park it and just walk the rest of the way but luckily i made it most of the way so time to get this workout in all right we made it to the gym and this is a nice gym too come on aruba time to go to the squat rack I forgot my tripod could act as a little selfie stick type thing, but that was a wonderful workout and that gym is nice. I'm not gonna lie, when I was on my way to Aruba, I didn't think I would find a nice gym. Everybody was telling me they're like, you know, use the hotel gym. Come on, look, for my real gym rats, y'all know that hotel gyms are the worst. They got one treadmill and like a few dumbbells and that's it. But I was able to find one. It's a bit of a commute, but the crazy thing is the same scooter that I used to get here is still here. So now I'm just gonna go to the beach. Look at that, the water is so blue. New York can never, that nasty Hudson. Come on now. Going to the beach. So I'm signing out until it's time to get ready for the gigs because now it's time for music content. All right, I got my suit packed. We getting ready to go to this wedding and get everything set up. All right. Took me a little bit, but got everything on my equipment. About to go down and meet the other cats. And we're gonna get ready for this wedding gig. I'm excited because um, I don't know what to expect when it comes to playing a wedding, a destination wedding. So this should be real fun. All right. Got the car packed. Ready to go as soon as the DJ gets downstairs. Be the dude walking around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Video tape and shit. Yeah, enjoying myself. I'm the same way. I catch, catch whatever I got going on. I'm not walking around like <laughs> Alright, this is the spot. And it's time for us to get set up. And the view is beautiful. Wow. <laughs> All right, I'm about to get some footage of the cocktail hour when I start, but this is the setup we're talking about. When it comes to the dance floor, I'm gonna be in the middle of that. And the DJ, percussion's over there. Hey, yeah!
it was a wonderful long party very sweaty very hot out here i'm signing out for the night so peace now this is crazy what all right it's a nice day time to get everything packed All right, I got everything, let's go. I cannot wait to go home, but unfortunately, I first have to go to Boston Airport and then go home. Whoever bought this ticket is tripping. Just got on the second flight, and the saxophone always fits. And I got a window seat, come on. Yeah, I had to do a layover in Boston, and. It was a few hours long, but I got to edit some videos and work on some music, so that was very much worth it. After all that travel, I'm finally back to the city. And I'm really, really exhausted, so I'm signing out. And to close out the video, I'm gonna do what I've been doing and answer some questions that you all submitted, so don't leave yet. All right, well, that concludes the trip, but stick around, I'm about to answer some questions. I just want to say it was amazing having an opportunity to go to the islands and perform and do what I love, you know. With no further ado, let's answer some questions. First question. Enjoy the viz, man. Appreciate it. How hard was it to get established in New York coming from Memphis? How did you start getting the gigs that you wanted? The short answer of this question is connections. In any field, not just music, in any career path, you always want to have connections. You always want to know people. When I first moved to New York, I actually didn't know anybody but my boy Luther Allison, and that was pretty much it. I didn't really know people up in New York City. And what I did was I did go to school for a semester and a half in New York City, so that helped building connections. I also played on the street a lot because I just needed money. Musicians I met playing on the street and the non-musicians I met, they've been the connections that have helped me get to know the people that I've gotten to know and eventually I built a whole network including you know the network for people that I met from Manhattan School of Music when I was there and from going to a lot of jam sessions and that network that word of mouth will make you go from a nobody to hey who's that guy on saxophone I think I, I think I need a saxophone for this wedding or, hey, do you know a saxophonist because I'm playing at Minton's Jazz Club next week and all the saxophonists I know are booked? Oh, yeah, I know somebody. His name is Brunel. He just got to town. You know, that's how that happened. Ooh, this is a long one. All right. What do you reckon are the main differences and similarities between a musician and being an athlete? Do you ever feel like the these roles clash or maybe don't fit together sometimes? Or do you think they could complement each other? Curious to hear your thoughts. Love your YouTube series. Oh, cheers, Nicholas, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So first off, I'm not an athlete. Um, I do go to the gym a lot, but I don't I don't compete in anything. The point is, I don't do any type of sports or anything. You know, I'm not in school. Yeah, I mean, I imagine there are a lot of similarities and differences between musicians and athletes. And I just to be honest, I don't know. But I can't answer the other question. Do you feel like these these roles clash or maybe fit together sometimes? Now, if you're talking about the fact that I go to the gym, they don't really clash because most of my gigs are at nighttime. And so in the morning and sometimes in the early afternoon, I have time to go to the gym. So those don't necessarily clash. Sometimes I miss the gym because I have things going on during the day. But other than that, I mean, that's the best way I could answer your question. Sorry if you were looking for anything else. Last question. How did you really get your foot into the music scene in NYC, especially in the jazz scene, working with Philip Harper, ETC? Any tips? Yes, I do have tips. Just like I said on the first question, building my network is what did it. If you're talking about specifically in the jazz scene, the best way is to keep going to jam sessions. As far as New York City, there are jam sessions every night. And the thing is, a lot of the same people go to the go to jam sessions. I'm going to call some names here because, you know, I always see my guy Tyreek McDole. I see him at jam sessions. I see Rico Jones. He's always going to sessions. My boy Josh Green, who's in my band, the drummer, he's going to jam sessions. When you start to see the same people all the time, you become friends with them, right, at these jam sessions. As you become friends with them, you can call them for your 
your work or they can call you for their work. And that's how that happened. I, I met Philip Harper at a jam session at his gig at Smalls. And he liked me and gave me his number and told me to call him. You know, and eventually I started working with him. That's the way to do it. All right, that concludes this video. One quick announcement. My band played at Smalls. It was a great show, a great set. You can actually watch the set in the link below because Smalls always live streams their shows. Go in that description. The link will be right there. Thank you, and y'all have a good one.